Thank you for viewing our educational videos on micromanufacturing with lasers. In part four, Dr. Ronald Schaefer, CEO of Photo Machining, will further discuss applications such as laser marking, surface texturing, and microelectronic applications. Over to you, Ron. Thank you, Rick. Okay, now we talk about marking. Marking is actually one of the simplest applications for lasers, and it is as the word ubiquitous says, everywhere. Uh, there are many, many, many examples for marking and probably on a per unit basis, way more laser machines get sold for marking than probably all the rest of the laser machines combined. Uh, marking is an interesting application area because it's required by the government, by other people. Uh, even if it's not required, maybe it's good for things such as anti-counterfeiting in whatever, again, metals, polymers, ceramics, we can mark just about any material. However, in most cases, the marking adds cost, but it really doesn't introduce any functionality into the part, uh, except for cases like where you're grade, uh, putting the graduations on a catheter or something like that, making some marks that would be seen. Usually the marks are just there for uh, traceability and uh, for other things that are administrative more so than the functionality of the device. So again, since these marks don't really add to the functionality, the marks have to be very inexpensive to make. And so that's what characterizes laser marking by, uh, by an afar, that's that the marks have to be fairly quick and fairly inexpensive. So we'll look at some examples of laser marking. On the left, you'll see a catheter that was marked with a barcode on some sort of plastic. Fairly easy to do with a UV laser. If you set the UV laser energy density correctly, you will actually introduce a photochemical color change in the material without removing the material. And the mark is not only clean and precise, it is indelible. On the right hand side, we see a 355 nanometer UV laser being used to mark uh, sperm vials. And this uh, marking directly on the vial eliminates the possibility or at least minimizes the possibility of um, mixing up the samples. More laser marking. Again, laser marking is everywhere on surgical instruments, on the actual implanted devices themselves, on surgical tubing, on packaging. Uh, of course, for things like surgical instruments and packaging, the marks can be fairly uh, large and fairly what we might call gross with perhaps a heat affected zone that doesn't matter. If you're talking about implantable devices, on the other hand, um, the actual mark probably needs to be very clean and probably needs to be such that you can't actually feel it when you run your hands over the device. This is sort of a marking application, a very, very thin layer of some material on another material. In this case, we're looking at a few hundred angstroms of gold uh, on mylar. We can use the laser to remove this gold go down to the mylar without touching the mylar and make a very, very clean cut in the material. Uh, the thing that you see, the St. Paul's Cathedral, is just a demonstration, but a very good application of this technology is in the um, diabetes test strips. If you look at diabetes test strips that are on the market, you'll find that all of them have several layers of plastic, and one of those layers has a uh, conductive material that's been laser patterned. We have surface texturing such as hip sockets. Hip sockets, uh, we want to put pockets in, in the sockets for lubrication. Also, we use surface texturing for cell adhesion. Uh, we also have laser additive manufacturing, and I've got two stars by that for a reason. Laser additive, man additive manufacturing is becoming huge, and these laser 3D printing machines are everywhere. Now, there are also non-laser 3D printing machines available, but one will find that the higher cost, yes, but also the higher precision and higher throughput machines are all pretty much laser based. We can also do selective material removal by choosing the right laser wavelength and also the right laser fluence. We can do things like skiving and wire stripping, which are essentially examples of selective material removal. So here's an example, biocompatibility and cell adhesion. You'll see a normally material that will not allow cell growth if you 
do something with the laser and expose the area, you can get cell growth. And on the left you see after three hours a bit of cell growth. And after a few days you see that the whole thing is pretty much covered with new cell growth. All right, we've talked about medical applications of lasers. Now let's talk about microelectronic applications. Essentially, we've still got the same bag of tricks. We've got drilling, we've got cutting, we've got welding, we've got marking. But we're doing it on different products. So in this case, we can talk about microvia drilling, which is probably the biggest application in the microelectronics industry. Uh, the microvias are drilled in copper and dielectric. Microvia diameters are typically less than about 250 microns and down to on the order of 10 microns, depending on the device. It turns out above 250 microns, which is about 10 mils in diameter, that the traditional um, drill bit drilling is fast enough and cheap enough and does a good enough job where lasers aren't so interesting. But if you get below about 10 mils in diameter, the uh, drilling speed slows down, the drills become more expensive, and they also break quite often. So at that point, you really start thinking about using lasers. And below about four mils in diameter, which is about 100 microns, you really want to probably use lasers and, and not some mechanical technique. We can also do profile cutting, through cutting, and also kiss cutting in different materials. We can do dielectric removal to expose conductors, which is essentially a selective material removal. We can do short repair. We can do solder mask removal. Solder mask removal is a real nice application for lasers because solder mask is difficult to remove by other means, especially when you want to remove it in a specific location and leave the rest on. It turns out that many different laser wavelengths are available that will allow us to do solder mask removal depending on the accuracy and also depending on what's underneath the solder mask. We can do fine line generation by patterning the resist films and then doing the uh, exposure and wash afterwards or we can generate the fine lines directly by direct copper pattern. Here are some examples of UV laser drilled microvias. These were all done with a 355 nanometer laser and they show a 30, a 40, and a 50 micron diameter via drilled in resin coated copper and drilled right down to the copper. And because this is a uh, UV application or a UV laser, that copper should be clean enough if you use it right after laser processing to plate without any post-processing cleaning. All right, solder mask removal. As I said earlier, solder mask removal is a really good application for lasers because it's difficult to do by any other means. On the top left, you see a picture where, on the left-hand side of the picture, we've left the solder mask there. On the right side of the picture, uh, or on the right side of the yellow line, at least, we see the solder mask has been removed. On the upper right, you see the CO2 T laser actually doing this solder mask removal in real time. On the bottom, we see some uh, examples of what happens on the left when a customer tries to clean the solder mask with a Dremel tool, and on the right when we actually do the solder mask exposure with our laser. A uh, pretty big difference. Now, solder mask is actually put on using stencils, and these stencils are generated using lasers. Most of the solder mask stencils that are used today are either a fundamental YAG or more recently fiber lasers that are making very, very small and controlled features in stainless steel masks. However, there's a limit to this technology because of the stainless steel material itself, but also because of the red laser that's used to process the stainless steel. So on the right hand side, you see a UV laser generated polymeric solder mask. These solder masks, masks can allow you to generate features that are much smaller than can be generated using the traditional, if you will, infrared laser and stainless steel. Thank you, Ron, and thank you for viewing laser applications. In part five, Ron will present additional industrial applications in the aerospace industry, battery manufacturing, and cutting hard materials such as diamond. Visit photomachining.com for more information.